it's more and more daylight as we get up each morning. It's going to be bright out here pretty soon. My St. Paddy's Day guy, we think the fuse is blown. Either that or the power pack's bad. He hasn't, he worked for a day and Don just hasn't had time to investigate further. So he's not up. Kind of a bummer. And it'll be St. Patrick's Day before you know it. Only going to be a high in the 50s today, so not a repeat 80. You ready to move to your other spot, Tux? Eh, let me move you. He goes, let me finish that mouthful first, though, Mom. Hey there. Hey. Feed kitty cat. Yep. One of these mornings, I'm going to come out and look up, and one of the barred owls is going to still be in a tree in the front yard. I, I hear them sometimes in the middle of the night, very close to the house. But don't see them. All the kitties are doing good this morning, including this little one who's watching and waiting for me to come back in the house. All right, and we're off. It's Friday, yay! I'm so excited. Even an hour extra sleep tomorrow would be nice. Good morning, Ruby. Wow. And autopilot, Ruby gave me the Ford collision warning on that crest back there again. So whatever this latest software release is, it hasn't um, resolved the issue in that location. And I just went ahead and hit the brake because she can regen up to the light and not use so much brake pedal. Anyway, since I was an autopilot, it's not like I get dinged on the safety score for it, but it definitely will wake you up a little bit if you're thinking about being sleepy in the morning when it happens, that alert goes off. It's 44 out there. So it looks really nice, but it's a little on the chilly side. Certainly can't fault how uh, pretty and clear the sky looks today. We're going to get over to the school about 7.25 a.m. Some blue flashing lights just up ahead. Hmm. Hope it's not too serious. Traffic doesn't seem to be backing up. So, Michelle and I are still meeting to shop today. I'm excited, as always. I think Don and I are going to walk when I get home, but we'll see. He's really in crunch mode now as they get ready for their go-live date, and... He worked late again yesterday, and I don't know, I'll do whatever he needs me to do, either this morning or after I get back from the school run this afternoon. So kind of exciting news. It looks like we might be getting closer to shipping cars out of Giga Berlin. You know, Don and I have both been quite skeptical about uh, the length of time that was going to take. Rob Maurer on Tesla Daily yesterday said it's been like nine months past their original target, and he didn't think it was a big deal because... They're not at capacity um, in Shanghai or in uh, California. And, you know, due to supply chain issues, it's certainly not a demand problem at all. So what would they have really done with more supply chain issues and even more production capability? I don't know that I'm going to quite go there, but okay. Um, so my fingers are crossed. That water thing will fade away and not come back to haunt them. And I guess they're talking about expansion, but they've had so many trouble getting going and passed all these regulations to begin with. Um, yeah, I don't know what I think about expanding that location. Maybe some, maybe somewhere else, Elon. I don't know. It just seemed really complicated over there. And that's the nicest way I can put it. So the news out of the Ukraine last night, um, kind of scary sort of frustrating um i wish i wish there was a way we could fix this and I, I you know not necessarily with might but if needed i don't know it's just really hard watching those cities be destroyed by the by this war and um you know putin currently seeming to be able to get away with whatever he wants to do over there and it's just it's really hard to stomach but i certainly have no quick solutions to offer up as to how we would how we would go about fixing it in a way that had a reasonably assured positive outcome um but anyway i'm sure all of our hearts go out to the people of ukraine and i'm sure many of us are as frustrated as i am about what's happening over there frustrated and nervous maybe scared a little bit i don't know those of us that grew up in the 80s with the cold war threat i don't know 
Anyway, I'm going to head on back to the house before I sit here too long, get myself out of this bright sun. Boy, is it harder driving in now and harder in the afternoon, too. I much prefer, even though it's dark out in the morning, even though the winter days are shorter, the driving is easier for me in the winter because in the morning we turn east ahead to the school and the sun is really in our face. And then in the afternoon we're headed southwest in the afternoon and the sun is really in our face and it's just, it's a little more um, uncomfortable. There's a turn or two in the morning where the sun is actually kind of makes it dangerous to, you know, it's just at the wrong angle in the sky this week and, um, you know, here for a few weeks. So anyway, that sun is way, <laughs> it's bright. <laughs> and I can cover it with the sun visor. Um, it's just that I didn't want my face while I was filming half in the shadow and half in the sun and the sun, you know, shade, obviously, it, it makes a, a shadow, so, but uh, I can, you know, the sun visor is not anywhere near as inadequate as people make it out to be, especially when you can, you know, flip it the other way. <laughs> Boy, that's bright. <laughs> I finished the first book in this series. The title was Hellfire. Now I'm moving on to book two, which is Inferno. There's four books total. Um, I'm pretty hooked. I, could, I listened while I was working on my Lego project yesterday, and I'm really hooked. Oh my God, there's a Model 3 in the car wash. <laughs> I was kind of just teasing about the car wash, but that's a sight I've never seen before. Um, you know, some people take their cars through the car wash, and they don't have any problems, and others wouldn't do that. And, to each their own, right? Um, I was just kind of being funny. What I was going to say is I studied the construction area here pretty good when I came through just now in the daylight, and I don't see what they did last night that had the lane closures. It said the line crossing, so I don't know. I wasn't able to tell exactly what they did. I'm a little late to meet Michelle. Um, Don and I didn't go for our walk. He was working on some JCL and really into it and personally I thought it was a little too windy and cold. It could be much nicer this afternoon. It's uh, sunnier than they said it was going to be and um, the winds look like they're dying down so we're going to go try to walk at four o'clock when I get back in from school. That was just better. So I decided <laughs> that I would try to deal with the uh, refrigerator saga because as I think most of you know that have been following along, we still don't have uh, a check from either Home Depot or Samsung to cover any of the refrigerator um, issues. So I started out with Samsung. I mean, I started out with Home Depot this morning and I uh, had to talk to two people there, the regular person that answered and the escalation person. That's just how they run their business. They expect you to escalate. And then um, they said to call Samsung, and that was the first time I had heard about that. So I called Samsung, a very nice person assisting me on the phone there. Um, not upset with her in the slightest. Someone I could really relate to, uh, just a, you know, mom and housewife like me trying to do support I, I totally got it but she passed me on to her manager for escalation and then that manager passed me on to yet one more manager for escalation and um yeah i guess i'm not going to say too much more because i threw the l word around and uh also the five on your side news team around i mean i, I told them we're not going to take it sitting down if you don't make this right. So um, you need to make it right because I'm not a put, I'm not going to be pushed over and not have my claim fulfilled. But I just clue you in on a little thing is don't let anybody ever haul off your refrigerator without trying to tear off the serial number sticker and keeping that sticker and taking pictures and documenting five ways from Sunday that you paid to have somebody haul it off, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera because um, that new piece of information that I needed, that sticker was presented to me today for the very first time. And you know, we're six to eight weeks into this now and um, we didn't know how would we have known. And, uh, but I got documentation out the wazoo. I have so many pictures and videos and, and pieces of paper and they're not gonna get away with it. But I was on the phone for over an hour and I was so upset that I was 
almost in tears and shaking that I was so upset. I mean, we're talking about thousands of dollars here. This isn't a $10 refund, you know. This is a major chunk of money. And, um, yeah, I also learned something. Um, apparently, Samsung and probably other major manufacturers, LG, but I don't know that for sure, they have their own warranties that don't involve the place that you bought the um, appliance from. And uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but it was suggested to me by the Samsung person that this would be going better for me if I had bought the extended warranty directly from Samsung. And I don't know that that's true, but I didn't even know Sam that you could do that versus getting it through Home Depot or Lowe's or Best Buy or whoever you buy the appliance from. So um, check into that and do some research if you're buying a major appliance that I can see where if you're remodeling your kitchen and you're buying all new one brand matching appliances or whatever, that it might really be worth it to go with the manufacturer on that one. We'll see. So um, I've sent in some documentation and I'm going to let them work the process. And um, I'm not going to go away and I'm not backing down. And Don doesn't want me to go away or back down. So we're in agreement on it. And um, there, I, I'm just... So I'm like 20 minutes late to meet Michelle over when I usually get over there and um, very stressed, but I'm going to go inside and have shopping. You know, she's not upset with me. Of course she's not. She's dealt with these warranty people for stuff at her house. They have a whole house warranty and she's has to make all those calls and deal with getting all of that fixed. And it's just a real mess sometimes. So I know Michelle understands and I'm sure after I get inside Guardian Angel, I'll, I'll get better quickly. <laughs> Shopping will fix some of this today. That and the pretty weather, even if it is chillier today. Here, I'll let you see the building under construction so you get an update on that if you're interested in how it's going. Uh, while I say, just make a couple other points I didn't make the first time. Um, number one is Samsung's very clear that they're prorating the amount back, which is not what the Home Depot protection plan uh, offered or suggested. And it's very clear that um, any other monies owed to us will then have to be sought out from Home Depot. So even if I can get Samsung to write a check for, uh, you know, a prorated amount off of the receipt price we paid, that still doesn't end the saga. I still will have to go back to Home Depot. So, um, yeah, being caught between um, the protection plan from Home Depot and the manufacturer, Samsung, in this case, is it's not a good place to be stuck. Hey, girl. Hey, good morning, Gloria. Oh, God. Well, I was on, you know, I know you know. I was on the phone for over an hour, and I talked to four different people. Two people at, actually five, two people at... Home Depot production plan and three people at Samsung because I had to keep on escalating it. Oh my God. The things you see that you wish were in a bigger size. <laughs> this is pretty cool. The Lego bricks actually build the little doggy looking bunny at the bottom. There are a lot of Duplos next door and here too. Maybe there's some little Legos. Michelle says I deserve some Legos after dealing with that service stuff. There are a ton of new purses for spring and a lot of Vera Bradley to choose from today. It looks awesome. That house is so cute. It has a button cell and it still lights up. I'm thinking about it. Oh my goodness, the perfect St. Patrick's Day socks. I love it. Create a most delightful journey, it says. Easter greetings. Ruby painted these in 96 and 97. Kind of makes it me sad that they ended up here. Friends are the ones who bring out the best in us. It's not a quality print, but if you had a space room, it's a NASA astronaut piggy bank. It's pretty cute. $12, not bad. Very spring, summer festive. Education is freedom, ain't that the truth? And it can be self-taught. It doesn't have to be in a classroom. So what is this? Spider Gwen from the multi-universe. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Do or do not, there is no try. I actually really like that motto. Why don't you, are you gonna get it for yourself? If you're not gonna fight me for it. Okay. They've swapped out a lot of the winter for 
spring and summer and there's a lot of new stuff to look through. What? <gasps> oh, way cool. When all else fails, hug the cat. I would take it home, but it's a small. Don's favorite movie, but not Don's size. I think I've seen this shirt before. I don't need Google, my wife knows everything. I don't really feel that way. I just, <laughs> I just thought it was funny in the middle of filming. Oh, wow. Look at this one. I pooped today. <laughs> I like it, but it's a 2X and it looks like it's a 4X. I mean, it's huge. You know, the thing about this mug is that the math never changes, so I'll always be one cat short. So we came out from Guardian Angel and Sean had moved Michelle's van just to play with her. I thought maybe he would remember the Tesla since his brother has a Model 3 that the Tesla, you know, records and would have, you know, stuck his tongue out at the camera or something. But he just took off really quick before he got caught and he didn't make any gestures. Gas is still 379 over there at the sheet, so that's good. I really need some wide open road. I just really need it. So it's Carvana. He just didn't have a lot of get up and go. First time I've seen their uh, delivery truck. I didn't count exactly, but I did about 15 steps, maybe more. This um, accordion thing here, I had to really hunt parts and I had to put it together a couple times, mostly because I was so busy hunting parts, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. But it's right now, you know, I stuck with it. And I'm still working here and here. I'm on step 218. Um, but I got, a, you know, I got a little bit done and it took a while to do this. So just as well, that part's over with. On a Friday after five, it's, uh, it's hard to make the left turn here. Guy in a pickup truck was really upset that I slowed to make the right turn today because he was ready to be doing 55 even though it's a 35 here. I, I guess for me, I'm about ready for him to put up a stoplight. Johnny's dropped off at Taekwondo. I've got to go back in uh, 90 minutes. It's 5.30 now, so I've got to go back at 7 o'clock and um, pick him back up. He's doing, he's volunteering at the first class and then he's in instructor training for the second class. So, he was reviewing his homework with me. You know, poor kid. And sometimes his math professor assigns homework on Fridays and it's due at midnight on Friday. I'm like, Johnny really needs sleep. And then, um, that guy was in my lane. He really needs sleep and then to do the homework on Saturday or Sunday. I, I sure hope, he ha he's not sure, I sure hope he doesn't have calculus homework tonight. You gonna get my leprechaun up before it's St. Patty's Day? Possibly, with a little <laughs> luck. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you know, I troubleshot it a little bit before I turned it over to the pro. It wasn't like I didn't do anything to try to get it going. He's got it up. It's uh, the outlet, not the inflatable, which is good news as far as I'm concerned. Might be more work for Don, though. <laughs> 